Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this final preview of DCS A10C2 Tank Killer, we'll take a look at the helmet mounted QE system or HEMIX for the A10. The HEMIX consists of several subsystems, but we'll focus on the helmet mounted display or HMD and the program editor in this video. The HEMIX provides excellent situational awareness and the ability to cue weapons by just looking at it and setting a target designation. Please note, though, that this is not the same helmet implementation for the Horn and Viper, and in many ways is far superior in the air-to-ground mode. Let's get started. So before we jump into the mission, let's take a look at some of the controls that we'll be using. Uh, first, we'll be using the A10C2 reel as our aircraft type. For categories, let's go to axis commands first. And to slew the cursor on the helmet, we'll be using the HOTAS slew horizontal and the HOTAS slew vertical, which you can see I have mapped to the mini stick on my throttle. And this is going to be the HDC or the helmet designation cursor. Now let's go to the HOTAS commands, where the hands-on throttle and stick. And the ones that we'll be using here, first will be the uh, coolie switch on the throttle. So coolie switch down, left, right, and up. And then coming down, we have the edema switch, or the display management switch, for aft, forward, left, and right. And then finally, we'll be doing the target management switch, or the TEMA switch, for aft, forward, left, and right. Okay, let's jump into the mission. Okay, so let's take a look at the HEMIX, and this is a rather involved system, so I'm going to break it down into several sections. But first things first, we'll need to make sure we have power to the HEMIX, and that's done through the control head down here. And with the HEMIX uh, power switch in the on position, we'll now see symbology on the HMD wherever we look. So let's zoom in a bit and talk about some of the very basic symbology on the HMD. Uh, first, here at the very top, we have the magnetic heading of the line of sight of the HMD. At the very bottom, we have the magnetic heading of the aircraft. To the left here is our uh, indicated airspeed, and to the right is our barometric altitude, and below that is our radar altitude. The horizontal lines here are called your helmet elevation lines, or the HELs, and the center is the crosshair. The solid line here, as you might imagine, is our horizon line. And if the horizon is outside the field of view of the HMD, it turns into a dotted line. Now going coolie switch up will toggle the sensor of interest between the HUD and the HMD. And when the HMD is sensor of interest, we now have the mark here on the display. Now the basic display controls through the HOTAS are done through the DEMA switch. With the HMD uh, sensor of interest, if we go aft on DMS, we can decrease brightness. And if we go forward on DMS switch, it increases brightness. To toggle it off and on, we can hold DMS left long. And that turns it off. And DMS left long again, turns it back on. So those are the basic uh, display function. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the navigation symbols now. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at steer points and mark points using the HEMIC system. Uh, first, let's come down here and take a look at the TAD or the Tactical Awareness Display. And we can see that our current steer point is indicated here, steer point 1, by the yellow box. Uh, also at that location, we have our sensor point of interest, or speed, indicated as the white wedding cake symbol. And what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and move my current steer point from steer point 1 to steer point 2, as well as the speed. Uh, to do that, I'll come back to my HUD and I'll go coolie uh, switch up to make the HUD the uh, sensor of interest indicated by the dot here. And now by going DEMAS forward short, I can cycle it forward. And now you can see the current steer point is steer point 2 as well as the sensor point of interest. Now note that also the same symbols for the current steer point and the speed are going to be the same ones we're going to see in the HMD. Now, so again here at steer point 2, we see the uh, yellow box and dot for our current steer point and the sensor point of interest. We also see the other steer points indicated as green boxes and a dot 
with the name of the steer point below in blue. If we move uh, too far away from the current B or uh, central point of interest, we'll get a line from the crosshairs to the B. Uh, the further is it away, the more dashed it becomes. Next, let's take a look at how to drop a mark point. Uh, to do that, first we're going to have to make sure that the HMD is our sensor of interest. Let's go coolly switch up. Now the HMD is our sensor of interest, indicated by the dot here. And by uh, slewing uh, the throttle cursor, we now see the HDC, or the helmet designation cursor. And we can slew this essentially anywhere within the field of view. And we'll place it on this road into the town. And at this location now, by simply pressing TMIS right short, we'll drop a mark point there. And as you can see here, it's a, just like the um, steer points. It's a green box with a dot, but instead we have a mark A in blue beneath it. If we want to recage the HDC to the crosshair, we'll simply go China hat aft, and it brings it back. And you'll notice that when it's uh, caged, it's a Maltese cross, but if it's slewed off, it's just a standard cross. Let's cage it back again. Uh, next, we can also place the crosshairs over a steer point or a mark point. And you'll notice in the bottom left corner of the HMD, we can see the bearing, the range, and then below that, the elevation of that ground point or, or air point at that point. We can also place the uh, cross over, again, either steer point or a mark point and press TMS4 short and make that our hook ship indicated by the dash box around it. And we do that, now we have a yellow line between the hook ship and the crosshair. And the further we get away from that, the more dashed it becomes. If we want to go ahead and make this hook ship our new speed, we go team is forward long. And now that's our speed, you can see as well. If we want to drop the hook ship, we simply go team is aft. And there you go. Another handy function is with a mark point, if you want to make the last mark point your speed, simply go TMS right long. And there you go. So those are some of the uh, fundamentals of steer points or mark points. Now we're going to take a look at units of the HEMICS, uh, both flight members, friendly aircraft, and ground units. Uh, first, with uh, flight members, these appear as blue circles, as you see here with a flight position in the center and the distance from us in miles below it. And you notice a bit of a lag there, and that's normal because of the data link network delay. Uh, further out, we see uh, green circles with the number below, and that's a friendly flight with the uh, distance from us below. And as before, if we place the uh, crosshairs over, we can get the bearing and range and altitude, and in some case, the uh, aircraft type, in this case, another A-10. And just like with uh, steer points and mark points, we can do a TMS forward short to make that a hook ship, or TMS forward long to make it our speed. Let's cancel that out. Uh, below that, we have an X symbol, and that's a ground unit with an E plars radio. Uh, so again, we can also see the bearing range and elevation. And finally, we have a little green mini speed symbol, and that's the uh, speed designation from a friendly aircraft which again, we can also uh, handily go ahead and make that hook ship and make that a speed to attack that as well if we wish. So that's a little look at units through the Hemix. Now, the last thing we'll take a look on the HMD is its integration with the targeting pod. And you can see here on the uh, right MSCD, we have the targeting pod up. And if we look through the HMD now, we see the same area outlined in a green dashed box. If we press DMS left short, we can bring up the video picture of that same area now. Let's actually go ahead and uh, zoom in the TGP a bit. And we can see the box collapse in the HMD, and we can see the targets a lot easier now. And of course, this is where the targeting pod is looking. So if we actually move our view over here, we're still looking actually at the targeting pod video. Come back. But let's say we wanted to have the targeting pod look over at this um, ground unit with an E-plars instead. We can actually put the crosshairs over this area and go long DMS right. And now it moves over there. Pretty handy. Finally, let's go ahead and take a look at profile programming. 
So, during the course of this video, you probably realize there's a whole lot of information you can put up on the HMD, and it can get quite cluttered pretty easily. So one of the things you have the option of is having three different programs and having different filtering on each of those three programs. So if we look over to our target area, let's go ahead and make the HMD the sensor of interest. If we go DMIS right short, we can cycle through the three different programs. So right now we're in program one, which has everything. Program two removes the hells and a couple other items. And then program three declutters quite a bit. And we go back to program one now, which has everything. So now the question is, well, how do you determine what's on each of those three programs? Well, to do that, we'll go to the stat page. We'll go to Hemix. And we have program options for one, two, and three here at the top. So right now we have selected program one. And program one, we have all these different items that we can choose from. We can hit the other page to go through all the ones at the bottom. To select an item, we'll use the arrows here, up and down controls the arrow here. So right now we have the horizon line selected. Let's go a little further down to say flight members. Uh, with the flight members we can select them as occluded, off entirely, on, or back to occluded. We can also determine for some items the range at which we see them. Uh, right now for example flight members are at 50 miles. Uh, if we want to make it say 25 miles we can punch in 25 on the scratch pad, hit range, and now we change it to 25. Uh, we also have the options for uh, day lighting, which we have right here, or we can go to a night lighting. So folks, that's an overview of the Hemix. I very much hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.